Center for Wooden Boats was interested in the designation. And I know that the Historic Seattle approached them because they were also doing a landmark application for the Wagner Floating Home. Colleen Wagner had started this process about a year before she passed away to both landmark CWB's floating buildings and her floating home together as sort of a package uh, so that they'd be protected and preserved. This property, along with the Wagner floating home, they're the only floating buildings that are landmarked in, in Seattle. So that's pretty special. We all know this place is one of a kind, but it starts with a really great property, one that has some historic significance, and this property absolutely has that. But it also, I think what helped in the designation process, the center really put effort behind bringing along its members to support that effort. So no pun intended, but we had a boatload of supporters really behind us, and I think it made it almost easy for the Landmark Preservation Board to approve the designation. My favorite part of, of the campus here is the boat shop. It's the oldest building. It was built in 1982 and, and towed to site in 1983. And it really, in, in, in Dick Wagner's words, he, he designed the building and it really set the architectural standard for the development of the campus. And his intent was to reflect sort of a turn of the century boat building facility, a boat livery, and he absolutely did that. You know, we look back 40 years ago at the neighborhood around and, and how it's developed. It was really a catalyst for kind of redeveloping the public spaces down here at the south end of Lake Union. So it's our it's our floating buildings and the pavilion are designated. And specifically, it's the exteriors of the buildings so that as you're walking through South Lake Union Park or looking down from the Wagner Education Center, it looks the same. And, it, and those buildings were designed by Dick, the exterior features. They have lots of little features that were sort of really specific. And uh, Dick and Colleen and all the early people involved with CWB really put a ton of effort in into what the feeling of flow of the organization should be. And that was a very visual thing. It was very much through architecture. They wanted to create an organization that was welcoming and bringing people together. And they felt comfortable. They felt like they were in their living room because the organization literally was started in their living room. So it is a city of Seattle landmark designation. And, and the most basic impact is in the controls that places on the property. During the designation process, the city uh, negotiates with the property owner sort of what those controls look like. And the point of those is to um, preserve the character and the essence of this place for years to come. This organization is all about preserving you know, maritime heritage and history, and we want people's experiences to be the same 20 years from now as it was 20 years ago. Um, and so this really helps a lot with that. When Dick Wagner and the whole crew were looking at Waterway 4 as a potential site, this place, I remember him saying in his newsletter that, that this place was a pothole wasteland. And it was, it was, undesirable to say the least and it had you know a lot of cleanup was needed to make this site functional. When CWB started you know we moved into this DNR waterway it's a public waterway it's a public space and Dick was told straight up that you should be prepared to move at any given point in time like you can move in here now because we're not doing anything with it but be prepared to move and so everything was kind of transitory in nature in the first place. So while the transition is happening around us today with Google behind us and some of the, the skyscrapers behind us, he was able to envision this place still as a, a public park that people could get on the water. And it, 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 it wouldn't happen today, no. <laughs> this is our 45th year. You know, as time goes on, you know, it starts to become more of an institution. We built this Wagner Education Center in the park. This building is nothing if we don't have the floating buildings. And so it, it kind of lends itself to that sort of long-term permanence for the organization, for the structures themselves. It's like, we're, we're not going anywhere. We're providing a public benefit. We want to keep doing that. We want to keep, you know, being a public resource for the city. And uh, landmarking really goes a long way for that because it's the city telling us and everybody that like, hey, this is important. This is why this is here.